Hello dear students, I am Shruti Hiramat, Assistant Professor, Department of Zoology, CK Thakur College, Mumbai. Today we are going to study about evolution. Evolution is a part of your SYBSC syllabus, Semester 4, Paper 1. When we talk about evolution as a student of zoology, we know that evolution is occurring at a very constant rate and we can observe evolution in and around us. Now how do we study about evolution? Simply, you compare two human beings, the one at a stone age man and the second one is a completely and today's man that is absolutely intelligent man. You can see that there are several similarities as well as there are differences between these two organisms. Did this change occur overnight? No, definitely not. These changes have accumulated and they have resulted in evolution. So what is evolution? Evolution is a process of constant change in heritable characters. What are heritable characters? Those characters or traits that can be passed from one generation to another generation. Evolution is a process of gradual change that takes place over many generations during which species of animals slowly change their physical characteristics. To understand evolution, we see two examples of giraffe and the second example is of humans. As you see in the first diagram, the giraffe can forage on the easily available grass on the ground. In the last pic, you see that the canopy is comparatively at a higher pole position. As a result, the giraffe has to stretch its neck. During the course of evolution, the giraffe gradually kept stretching its neck and it resulted in an increased length of neck of giraffe. The second example we consider is of humans. Humans, if we trace back our ancestry, we can find the Homo habilis, we have the Homo erectus, we have Homo neanderthals and we are the Homo sapiens. Clearly, you can see that there are differences, there are changes in the physical abilities as well as their cognitive abilities. Now, when we talk about evolution, it is incomplete without discussing about this one great man that is Charles Darwin. Charles Darwin is called as a father of evolution. Now, Charles Darwin was very curious and this curiosity took him to a voyage on HMS Beagle. He landed at the Galapagos Island and Galapagos Island was full of diversity of different animal species. Darwin, with his very keen and curious eyes, observed all the species on the Galapagos Island. Specifically, he took a note of the Darwin finches as we call them now. Darwin finches, you can see in the diagram that they have different and varying beak sizes. Darwin carefully observed the Darwin finches as well as all the other organisms on the Galapagos Island and he documented it in a book that is called as On the Origin of Species. This book comprises of all the experiences Darwin has witnessed in the Galapagos Island. Due to this expedition, Darwin was able to make four postulates which we call them as Darwin's postulate. The first part of Darwin's postulate is the overproduction. Each and every organism on this planet is going to inherit or they are going to pass on their genetic material to the next generation. So one thing is clear that all the organisms on the earth are going to reproduce and there will be a gene flow or there will be a particular passing of the characteristics from one progeny to the another progeny. The second is the variation. Due to overproduction, there is a variation in the organisms that you can see. The third postulate talk about the selection. What is selection? It simply means that the survival of the fittest. The organism that is more fit will survive and will get selected by the nature. The organism which is unfit will be eliminated out by the nature. The last postulate is adaptation. Those organisms which have been selected, they will be well adapted to their surroundings. So, here we study in brief about Darwin. Next, we see the forces of evolution. Now, whenever we talk about any process, we have to decipher or we have to see what are the drivers of those particular process. For example, a very simple example. You take an ice cube, you keep that ice cube out in the normal room temperature. What will happen to the ice? It will melt. Now, what has caused the melting of the ice? 
probably the most evident feature is the temperature now when we talk about evolution just like the melting of ice evolution is a process what are the drivers of evolution there are certain things which will bring about evolution just like the temperature brought about melting of the ice there are certain drivers of evolution which we call them as forces of evolution the evolution is based on these four forces the first one is mutation the second one is a gene flow genetic drift and natural selection let's try and study one by one the first one over here is a mutation what is mutation it's simply a change in the dna you can see the first diagram where there are two bugs which are green in color in the second picture the green bug there is a green bug with the green bug there is a brown bug that you can see in the picture here we talk about mutation so here we have said that there is certain genetic changes that has occurred in the genetic material and which has resulted in the variation or we can say that has resulted in the formation of the new organism so due to mutation there will be evolution that is definite the second example here we see of is the gene flow what is gene flow you see two populations over here one is a population of the green bug and the second one is a population of the brown bug gene flow simply means that one given organism that is the brown bug is going to migrate to a population of the green bug now there will be a mating between the brown bug and the green bug which will produce the f1 progeny which will be definitely different from or they will have their own differences they will have their own similarities to the parental progeny so here we say that gene flow will result in a new organism and that can account for evolution the third one is we are going to study about the genetic drift genetic drift is a catastrophic or by chance event okay or we can say the genetic uh, drift can result or it is happening due to a chance event so we say what is a chance event a chance event can be a catastrophic activity like a volcano like a river that is flowing like a flood okay so these are the catastrophic activities that can segregate separate or kill an organism or an entire species for example if you see the first diagram over here it is comprising of the brown as well as the green bug the second diagram over here shows that there is a stamping that is made by this person on the green bug now if you see the next population there is only the survival of the brown bugs that are present what happened to the green bugs all the green bugs have been killed away by a catastrophic activity so we say that whenever there is a genetic drift it will result in an evolution it will decide what new species will come up and which new or which species species will be eliminated next is the natural selection when we talk about natural selection it has much to do with the environment natural selection simply means the way the environment is going to affect the survival or death of a person or any given species for studying natural selection we see a simple example of industrial melanism here you can see two different diagrams on the left you can see or we talk about the era where there was no industrial revolution that had occurred since there was no industrial revolution there was no questioning of the pollution in the atmosphere as a result there were lichens that were present on the branch of this tree lichens are the organisms which will grow in as in an absolutely 0% pollution environment now you see two bugs or you can see two types of peppered moths as we call them there are light peppered moth as well as there are dark peppered moth you can see in the picture now these two peppered moths are going to occupy the branch so the black peppered moth is going to occupy the branch as well as the white peppered moth have equal chances to occupy the branch now since the branch is having a lighter color the light color peppered moth can be easily camouflaged but when the dark colored peppered moth is going to occupy the branch it will be easily visible and as a result whenever there is a predator attack the dark colored peppered moths are going to be killed so here we see that more the population there uh, more there is a more population of the light colored peppered moth as compared to the darker colored peppered moth next diagram we talk about industrial revolution okay 
so this is an era where industrial revolution is occurring there will be several factories there will be several industries which will give out coal or which will give out soot in the environment now due to this pollution the lichens as you can see they have completely disappeared from the branch of the tree there is a branch of a tree and now the same thing or the same story we repeat over here that the dark colored pepper moth will occupy the branch and the white colored pepper moth are also going to occupy the branch but now the things have changed there is a change in the environment now here there are chances that this dark colored pepper moth will be camouflaged okay so if the predator comes now whom is it going to pick up it is definitely going to pick up the light colored pepper moth so in the diagram you can see that there is 80% of the dark color phenotype why has this occurred or why this changes are there that you can see who is the driving force of this changes it is natural selection but more importantly it is environment due to the change in environment these changes have occurred and this will affect the rate of survival of a given species the next apart from natural selection there are three different selections one is a stabilizing selection the second one is a directional selection and the last one is the disruptive selection now when we talk about stabilizing selection we can see over here that there are different mouse colors that uh, can be seen one is an absolutely light color the last one is an absolutely dark color mice when we talk about stabilizing selection we say that a heterozygote that means an intermediate color is being selected by nature the second one we study about the disruptive selection so let's name them if this is small a small a that we talk the second one we call it as a capital a capital a and this is a intermediate mice that we call it as a capital a small a. so in stabilizing selection what do we say an intermediate is selected that means a heterozygote will always be selected the second one is a disruptive selection we are saying the homozygotes will be selected irrespective whether they are homozygous recessive or whether they are homozygous dominant they will be selected the third one is a directional selection in directional selection again we are saying that there are equal chances and fair chances of the light colored mouse light colored mouse to be selected and a dark colored mouse to be selected okay so we say that in disruptive selection both are having simultaneous chances to be uh, to be get getting to be selected but over here directional selection we say that only one can be selected either the dark colored mouse can be selected or the light color mouse will be selected by the nature now when we talk about evolution we are having evidences for the evolution one such evidence is a comparative anatomy anatomy is study of the structural differences and similarities between given species and comparing them in a entire phylogenetic tree so when we talk about anatomy we say that it is a study of similarities and differences in the structure of different species similar body parts may be homologous structure or analogous structure they both are evidences to the evolution what are a homologous structure homologous structure as you can see that they are having a common ancestor they have evolved from a common ancestor so if you see an example of human hand there are several different bones there is a humerus there is ulna there is a uh, radius okay so these particular bones are going to be similar in cat in horse in bat as well as in dolphin so we are saying that structurally these are similar but functionally they can vary the second example or the second evidence to evolution is of an analogous structure analogous structure is an exact opposite to the homologous structure where we say that they do not share any common ancestor here you can see there is a wing of bird there is a wing of bat and there is a wing of butterfly though their functions are similar that is all the all these structures are used for flying but they are Uh, though they are functionally similar their structures are absolutely different they have evolved independently of each other so with this there are several different evidences to evolution that we will be discussing now coming to a very big question is evolution occurring is evolution still occurring yes as you see this video as i give you a lecture yes Evol evolution is occurring what have we defined evolution it is a change which is gradual 
and it is a constant change okay so constantly as we look or we do engage in our daily activities evolution is occurring in and around us so that's all for today thank you keep evolving